Hi everyone, it's African Esquire. This is going to be a very quick video. Um, it's actually more of a Hot Topics video and I try to do those usually on weekends. However, I did want to kind of piggyback on some previous commentary I made on the Monique situation given the recent interview that she had with The Breakfast Club. So previously um, I did a video when I was talking about the Monique situation when it first came out and my commentary was that at the very least Black people should basically keep our mouths shut when it comes to challenging other black people who are saying that they're facing racism and discrimination. Because at the end of the day, you really don't know what that person could be feeling. You don't know whether or not that person said is true or not. And a lot of times racism kind of is a personal feeling and experience. You really can't um, tell someone that they didn't experience racism or you can't tell someone that they didn't experience discrimination. Um, so I, I tend to always keep my mouth shut, even if I don't necessarily feel offended in a certain regard. Although in my mind, um, racism is a factor in many things, um, which is another reason why I will usually not say anything against someone who claims that they're being, uh, object, uh, subjected to discrimination. Um, but at the very least was that what I was saying in the previous video, we should essentially, even if you don't support just keep your mouth shut and keep it moving. If you don't agree with it, you don't agree with it. And I watched the uh, Breakfast Club interview, and I think what happened during that interview and what came out after the interview is a really good lesson as to why you should never open your mouth against someone else's situation when you don't know all the facts or make conclusions of going against someone who is claiming that they are subjected to racism if you don't know all the facts. So um, if anyone did not see the interview, and I'm sure most people have at this point because I was just looking at it recently, it had two point something million views. And essentially, Monique was once again trying to explain to people how she has been subjected to discrimination according to her, because she is a black woman. And my issue with the interview was not so much that Charlemagne was challenging her on certain points, because he was making some good points as far as his um, challenge, his challenges. They were, they were legitimate questions some of the times, but it was more so how anxious and how worked up he was to kind of defend Netflix. And Netflix... Although, you know, most of us have left Netflix, most of us use it, and I don't think Netflix is all bad as far as what I've seen. Um, there's a lot of good movies on streaming services that you might not get otherwise. And, I, I, you know, I, I'm not, I don't have a vendetta against Netflix, but at the same time, like, why are you so thirsty to act like this institution is legitimate? Why are you so anxious to uphold Netflix. I mean, at one point he even said, well, I called Netflix and about the Wanda Sykes deal and I asked them why and they said they would never do that. And anytime Monique brought up the Wanda Sykes deal, he would always say, well, Netflix said they would not do that today. And it's like, why, what makes you think that them telling you that actually is legitimate? Like, what may, why would you think that because someone gave you some... Um, Gave, gave you some words saying, oh, yeah, we would not do that. What, what makes you think that that's actually the truth? So Charlemagne's argument essentially fell apart um, this weekend when we learned, and one of his biggest arguments was that Moni, the reason why she should not even be um, complaining about discrimination is because as far as metrics, it's clear that Netflix well, cares about current visibility and the fact that um, Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock and Amy Schumer sold out the garden and um, did a bunch of other random things, that should be evidence enough to say that you haven't done those things, therefore you shouldn't have actually gotten a, um, you shouldn't have gotten nearly what they get. And what we found out this weekend was that D. Ray Davis, who is another comedian, I don't Really, I'm not familiar with him too much, but I do know enough to say that he has nowhere close to the visibility that Monique has in the black community as far as back as being in uh, the Parkers, as far back as her comedy specials, the Queen of Comedy tour, 
Um, the many things she's done. I mean, I've I've known Monique before I've ever seen her in any movie movies. I just know her. Like I just know her face. I know her um, her comedy. I just know her. And yet, D. Ray Davis was actually offered five million dollars according to um, new information that came out. Now, I heard he was offered $5 million. I also heard that he was offered $2.5 million for his Netflix deal. Regardless of if it's $5 million or $2.5 million, even $2.5 million is five times more what Monique was offered. So, D. Ray Davis has never sold out the garden. Um, he had, He's more current, definitely, but... I don't, again, I don't, if I seen him versus Monique on Netflix, I would probably most likely click Monique because I just have more recognition with her. I know her from being around. I know her from being a black comedian who has made her rounds. So the fact that he actually got five, at least five times more as her and possibly 10 times more as her um, in a deal, that's... That, that basically completely throws out his argument. So let there be a, a lesson of caution. And this is all just, I'm just basically coming to all this just to say this is a lesson for all of us. Number one, if someone comes out saying this, so-and-so did something racist to me or discriminated against me, as a black person, you should not be the person to try to tear down their argument. Period. Like, you should not be the person. And you never, I, didn't, I, I have not seen one white person, one non-African person who has come against Monique with um, criticism, not one, I've only seen our own people. And so if anyone's going to do it, let it be them. Because re regardless, if, if it is um, not legit, a legitimate claim, trust me, it's not going to go through with white society. And if it was a, um, if it had something to it, they essentially would have to come out and, you know, agree or come out and um, have the light shown on them and shown that they are actually racist. But don't be so anxious to defend them. And number two, if you don't have all the facts, don't assume facts, especially when we're talking about sensitive issues of racism. All because someone's your friend doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to do bad to one of your people. So that was just something I wanted to say really quickly. I was very frustrated when I seen the... Um, interview with Monique and I think that that should be a tale of caution to show me the fact that D-Ray Davis was offered this much um, and to all black people you know don't be so anxious to defend these white institutions they don't care about you um, they have no allegiance to you so the fact that you would put yourself out there not knowing the facts pretending that you do is just treacherous to me as far as your allegiance to African people